This is the voice of disruption. It's Ken Rakowski, voice of disruption. Thanks a lot for being part of the show where we're here to talk about what's going on in the world of disruption. Joining me in the studio is Mr. Vin Clancy. Now, Vin, many people may not know you because you are a new name when it comes to the word hacking, growth hacking, actually, right? That's right. What is growth hacking? So growth hacking is the disruptive marketing practices that the likes of Uber, Airbnb, and Facebook used to grow massive without traditional ad spend, which I'm now bringing to traditional industries and traditional businesses. You mentioned some pretty disruptive companies themselves, Airbnb and Uber. They went after industries that were legacy, they were old, and they were right for the picking, right? That's right. Does that mean I have to, or the people that are listening have to be in those industries that are also legacy, ready to fall apart, or could it work for anyone when it comes to growth hacking? All industries are being disrupted or will be disrupted in the next 10 to 20 years. So these practices, it could be disrupting uh, the sales channel, the marketing channel, the product. So there's multiple areas that you can disrupt uh, and growth hacking can help in all of them. Okay, anything, Correct. anything. So. Government, we've seen that growth hack, right? Yeah. From all over the world. Municipalities, being local governments, could do the same thing. But how about mom and pop shops? Can they growth hack themselves into success? Uh, absolutely. Uh, for instance, when Pokemon Go was big, you had people creating Pokemon shops uh, in their little coffee stores, and then Pokemon people would rush in, and while they were there, they would buy coffee. So you can use technology to disrupt and get people to your store. Got it. People want to find you. What's the website for you? Uh, VinClancy.com, uh, Instagram, Vin underscore Clancy. Okay, just stop there. Let's just talk about the dot com real quick, okay? Yeah. This is new to you, meaning at one point in time, you probably never imagined to see yourself where you're at today, correct? Correct. Yeah, so let's go back, um, I don't know how many years ago, but you were basically homeless. Yeah, I was temporarily homeless 2012. Um, so I was on welfare, um, and uh, I pretty much been fired from every job I ever had. But then I discovered the internet, I discovered growth hacking, uh, I started an online magazine, got hundreds of thousands of monthly visitors, uh, raised hundreds of thousands of dollars, and then I've launched multiple internet companies since then. So you literally have growth hacked yourself. Yeah, yeah, right? and I still am. You're always doing it. Yeah. So what I'm gonna ask is, not yet, but you're gonna give us some tips and secrets that you generally don't share to the open public, okay? Sure. And also some buyer beware situations too, okay? When you were young, what did you see yourself do when you got older? Is this what you thought you'd be doing? Um, I, I think writing was always big, and in a way, I'm doing that now with the copywriting and the tweets. Writing has been the consistent theme across when I started music journalism right to today. People don't see you right now. If they're listening, you're wearing a Michael Jordan outfit, a Chicago Bulls outfit. This is your uniform, I guess. Is there a reason why you got a MJ whole outfit um, on? The day after his father died, he had to compete in the NBA final. Mm. He won the game and then he came back into the dressing room and started crying. I love that uh, that drive and that inspires me. That's what it is. Finn Clancy's joining us right now, this voice of disruption. So let's talk about the whole idea of what people are doing wrong when it comes to the idea of growing their business online. What are they doing wrong? So they, by default, uh, they try and spend their way out of problems when they can actually do a lot with organic traffic, community building, email lists, and social media before they get to that point. Uh, spending is like taking drugs. Eventually, the money runs out, the drugs run out, and then you're in trouble. And you're saying spending, you're saying buying ads or giving Facebook money to get some visibility. So Facebook ads is the way you scale, but for a lot of early stage businesses, they default to spending money when there's actually a lot they can do with content and community, which is, uh, which is two areas that I've grown my empire on. I've never done paid ads for what I'm doing. You've never? No. Ever? No. Okay, so most people don't realize one of the most important things to have is a bit old school, and that's an email address, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and people say uh, millennials don't have email addresses, and this is true until they get a job, then they do. <laughs> no one escapes. But you, capturing that email address, making sure it's real, and knowing it's a precious asset, that's what you're all about, right? Absolutely. So we've seen people build big Facebook pages or Instagram pages, then they change the algorithm and you don't have access to those people. Right. But when you have an email, you have that for life. People don't change their Gmail address. And you always feel that you have to offer an incentive, a value to yeah. get that email address. You're not stealing it, you're trading it. Value for that email address, right? Yeah, in an ideal world, uh, you should be sending them something physical like your book and they only pay the postage on it. Um, but certainly something that solves their biggest problem 
The one secret to losing weight most people will never do. The one secret to meeting girls. So that's the sort of lead magnet people want. It sounds like clickbait. Um, clickbait is uh, a kind of negative term. But, <laughs> but it does sound like it, right? So the thing with clickbait is uh, if you don't have a title that makes people click, you've wasted your time creating the product or article anyway. Um, if the headline's no good, the rest of it doesn't matter. Okay. So your function in the world today is to help people have giant growth inside their business utilizing online tools. That's right. Right? All right, give us some secrets. I need three unbelievable secrets. By the way, Vin Glancy's joining us right now. We're talking about growth hacking. Three, ready? Number one. Number one, uh, chatbots are the big opportunity in chat marketing. Chatbots. Yeah. Okay, got it. So what that is, is there's a couple of pieces of software you can use that when you do a Facebook post from your page, Anyone who comments uh, gets a direct message to their Facebook inbox and are then added to a, a mailing list inside Facebook. Why is this better than uh, email? Because chatbots have about 97% open rate because everyone opens their Facebook messages right now. Yeah, I've noticed even going to certain Facebook pages, the messenger pops up now. Yeah. It's almost defaulted. Okay, so chatbots, doesn't cost anything, does it? Uh, no, many chat or chat fuel, one of them is free, I forget which. Okay, that's one. Number two. Uh, number two, uh, the big opportunity in organic personal branding is LinkedIn. LinkedIn has become a, a personal branding platform, not just somewhere you look for jobs. So what I liked about LinkedIn, and you tell me if I'm correct, I create the narrative there. I own that narrative yeah. on LinkedIn, and it SEOs incredibly well. It generally comes up as one of the top three when you do a Google search, right? Yeah. So what, what do you do on LinkedIn that most people aren't doing? So there's automated software you can use to uh, connect all of your target prospects at scale. Mm -hmm. um, and then if they choose to connect with you, you can send them an automated message. Uh, so you can target hundreds of people every single day uh, using software like Linked Helper and GPZ. Before we get to number three, I know that you're gonna be rushing off and you're doing a virtual conference. You do these often. Is there a certain platform you like to use? Um, go to webinar is the most stable. That's, I know that Zoom's become very popular too, right? Yeah, Zoom I use for the group coaching and GoToWebinar when it's just me talking. And, but you do feel that it's important to see your face, to talk to people, and you do these often, right? Yeah. I've noticed that a lot of people in your industry find this is a good way to maintain people's attention and connection. Yeah. Businesses should be doing it on a regular basis too, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah, video is, is it's, it's no big surprise, but uh, the likes of Vice and lots of big publications, they're just firing all their writers right now and doubling down on video. Yeah, it's really? a huge trend. All right, so then before we get to number three, I want you, you got to make it big, okay? Because I'm trying to sensationalize it. I'm wondering that when you walk into these offices and you say, I am going to help you have real growth, you don't use words like, I'm a guru or I'm uh, uh, an expert, because it seems like some of these words are abused. Is there certain things that we should pay attention to that might be big red flags when we go off and find a growth hacker? Um, so if they, if they can't talk at length about what they do, if they can't talk about where the future is heading, Basically, if they give you short answers, I find that's a massive red flag that they have no idea what they're talking about. Okay. Uh, so being able to uh, go to a meeting and learn something and have a full plan that you could execute even if they don't do it because they're so full of ideas. I think ideas are the currency. Ideas are the currency, but execution is actually where the reward is. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, but if they don't have the ideas, they probably won't be able to execute anyway. Okay. Another challenge is this. If the quote-unquote growth hacker really doesn't have a social footprint themselves, that should be a red flag, right? Absolutely. <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, yeah. they must have at least one or two platforms they're big on. I, I see this so much with people who say they do social media, and then they have 50 followers on Twitter. Oh, so proof is in the pudding. Yeah. Make sure they know what they're doing. And let's now get to number three. What is number three? So like, it's not as sexy as some of the others I said, but I genuinely believe building a personal brand and your own community is the most defensible thing you can do. If I don't buy from you, there's 10 other people you can buy. So set up a Facebook group, uh, start inviting people in by email, and everyone is addicted to Facebook. Everyone is in their feed all day. That's the one place you want to be, especially if you're in the business niche. So I would set up a community. There you go. People want to find you again. It's vinclancy.com. That's where you go and hang out. Vin, thanks a lot for hanging out with us on Voice of Disruption. Thanks a lot. We'll be right back.